A century ago, an audacious German architect conceived perhaps the most outlandish scheme in history, the literal draining of the ocean. This proposal eclipsed all others in terms of engineering marvels, surpassing even the likes of the pyramids of Giza, the Hoover Dam, and the Panama Canal. But what motivated this ambition, and could such a plan feasibly succeed? To unravel this captivating tale, we must journey back to the 19th century, a time when many Europeans, particularly in Germany, pondered a concept known as Lebensraum. Translated as living space in English, Lebensraum epitomized a straightforward notion. As a nation's population swells, so too does its need for expanded territory. Welcome to my channel. In the 1920s, Adolf Hitler became captivated by this concept, profoundly shaping his worldview. He concluded that as Germany's influence expanded, it would inevitably require substantial additional living space. This sentiment wasn't unique to Hitler. Across Europe, burgeoning populations were straining available land. Nations resembled overfilled balloons in a cramped room, each vying for breathing space. Many feared an impending burst. Complicating matters were escalating energy demands. As populations surged, so did the need for resources like coal and oil. The looming specter of war over territorial expansion seemed inevitable as nations scrambled to secure land and vital resources from each other, with conflict appearing as the only recourse. In the 1920s, a German named Hermann Sorgo approached the issue from an entirely novel angle. His brainchild, Atlantropa, merged Atlantic and Europa to evoke the mythical city of Atlantis. Yet his proposal rivaled even this legend in audacity. Sorgo's vision, draining the Mediterranean. By emptying this vast body of water, he aimed to unlock new territories for European settlement offering a peaceful solution to the Lebensraum dilemma. The Mediterranean, approximately eight times the size of modern Germany, represented an immense untapped resource. Sorgo envisaged sprawling landscapes emerging from the depths, ready for cultivation. His dream depicted harmonious towns and cities, free from spatial constraints. Furthermore, by eliminating the Mediterranean barrier, travel between Europe and Africa would become more accessible, expanding settlement opportunities into Africa. Interestingly, Sorgo drew inspiration from a geological phenomenon. The Mediterranean's water evaporation outpaces inflow from rivers, maintained only by the Atlantic's influx through the Strait of Gibraltar. He noted that around five million years ago, tectonic shifts temporarily closed this strait. Isolated from Atlantic inflows due to tectonic shifts, the Mediterranean gradually receded, unveiling vast expanses of land over millennia. When the Strait of Gibraltar reopened, a deluge refilled the basin, momentarily shrinking the sea and dramatically expanding Europe's landmass. Inspired by this geological event, Sorgo sought to replicate it through civil engineering eschewing geological patience for human intervention. Sorgo's audacious plan centered on constructing a dam across the Strait of Gibraltar, mimicking its ancient closure. The enormity of the task was staggering. The strait, plunging 900 meters at its deepest, presented unprecedented engineering challenges. Notably, its width, spanning 13 kilometers at its narrowest point, dwarfed previous dam projects. For perspective, the largest dams in existence, China's Jinping, Weem, and Nurek, spanned mere hundreds of meters. Sorgo's envisioned structure would surpass these in height and stretch over 20 times the length. Yet, Atlantropa's ambitions didn't stop there. Sorgo proposed damming the Dardanelles Strait, aiming to separate the Mediterranean from the Black Sea with a structure exceeding one kilometer in width. These colossal barriers, if realized, would isolate the Mediterranean, initiating a decline in water levels. But Sorgo's vision didn't conclude with isolation. He also proposed a dam between Sicily and Tunisia, 
effectively partitioning the sea into two halves. This endeavor surpassed even the grandeur of his prior proposals. The expanse between Sicily and Tunisia stretched over 150 kilometers, where Sorgo envisioned a dam dividing the Mediterranean into two sections. His plan aimed for a 100-meter drop in the western half and twice that in the eastern, a seemingly intricate design backed by meticulous calculations. Considering the coastal topography, these specific water level adjustments were deemed optimal for land reclamation. The anticipated outcome? Up to 700,000 square kilometers of newly revealed land, twice the area of Germany, effectively resolving Europe's spatial constraints. But predictably, Sorgo's ambitions extended further. Recognizing the looming threat of overpopulation on Europe's energy resources, he proposed Atlantropa's colossal dams to serve dual purposes as hydroelectric power stations. These stations would not only sustain the envisioned cities, but also provide electricity for broader European regions. In essence, Sorgo envisioned not only transforming the Mediterranean into a vast living space, but also harnessing its potential as a colossal water-powered energy reservoir. In hindsight, his aspirations seem exceedingly ambitious, but at the time, they garnered considerable interest. Sorgo authored numerous books on Atlantropa and disseminated his ideas through hundreds of leaflets and articles. Many were captivated by the notion of a peaceful remedy to the looming crisis of overpopulation, including some politicians who viewed Atlantropa as a preferable investment to the specter of war. As contemporary architects and engineers delved into Sorgo's concepts, they refined and expanded upon them. A revised proposal emerged, suggesting a series of dams to block the Strait of Gibraltar, resembling steps or terraces to manage the Atlantic's water in more manageable increments. Drawing inspiration from the Netherlands' extensive dam and dike systems, which reclaimed land from the North Sea, these developments bolstered hope in Atlantropa's feasibility. Emboldened by these advancements, Sorgo conceived grander schemes, advocating for a unified European power grid to deter conflict. He proposed the strategic use of canals in regions like Italy and Egypt, where receding sea levels would isolate cities like Venice and Cairo from maritime trade. Yet Sorgo's vision ensured connectivity through a network of canals, ensuring continued access to these vital hubs even as the Mediterranean dwindled. Adding to his expansive vision, Sorgo proposed connecting Europe and Africa to form a unified continent dubbed Euro-Africa. His plan involved constructing another dam across the Congo River, creating a freshwater inland sea to irrigate the Sahara Desert, transforming it into fertile land. This, in his view, would render the region territory actually useful to Europe. Sorgo envisioned linking this area to European nations via railways, including routes traversing the dams across the Strait of Gibraltar and between Sicily and Tunisia. However, not everyone embraced these proposals. In hindsight, they reflected the colonialist attitudes prevalent in Europe at the time, disregarding the interests of African inhabitants who resisted European influx and land appropriation. While Sorgo aimed to prevent European war, he seemed indifferent to the disruption his plans would bring to African lives. Criticism of the Atlantropa project extended beyond its colonialist implications. Even if feasibly constructed, concerns over public safety loomed large. What if natural disasters or terrorist attacks compromised the dams, unleashing catastrophic flooding as the Atlantic surged back into the Mediterranean, submerging the towns and cities Sorgo envisioned? Moreover, the exorbitant cost of the project remained a significant hurdle, with estimates suggesting an astronomical expense. The Ziri Works, though smaller in scale, cost over a billion US dollars, highlighting the immense financial challenge Atlantropa posed. With all European countries required to contribute, the level of cooperation needed seemed improbable, especially before the establishment of the European Union. 
Doubts regarding feasibility further plagued the project. Many engineers questioned the viability of Sorgo's plans, which have yet to be matched by any dams built to date. Despite lifelong advocacy, Sorgo never saw his dreams materialize. Instead, he witnessed his fears realized as Adolf Hitler's expansionist ambitions ignited the Second World War, leading to the collapse of Europe. Tragically, Sorgo perished in a car accident amidst the chaos, and with his passing, the Atlantropa vision quickly faded into obscurity. Thanks for tuning in to explore the intriguing concept of the $1 trillion dam to drain the Mediterranean. If you enjoyed this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more fascinating content. Stay curious, and until next time.